America. What's going on guys, it's Predator 31 In this video, we're gonna be looking at one of my all-time personal favorite packs, and that is the Medium and Large Alice Pack. To this day, guys, I believe that the Medium and Large Alice Pack is one of the most combat-proven, modular-designed packs ever implemented by the U.S. military. Although it's been largely replaced by other pack systems in the U.S. military, I still think it's a prime contender and, in my opinion, is the best possible pack. Not to mention the budget. <laughs> it is a very budget-friendly pack and very appealing to uh, the budget-minded warrior. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and uh, get started. I'm going to go through and show you guys the, uh, the different packs, both the regular as it was issued, and then I'll show you some of the modifications and uh, some of the little knickknacks that make it so modular. So thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to leave a comment. So let's get a close look at these Alice Packs. So when we talk Alice Packs, we're generally talking about your two different variants, which is the medium and large Alice Pack. There are also generations of them. So you got the LC1, which is the first generation, which is the packs that came out in the late 70s uh, until they were replaced by the LC2 variants. So on LC1, typically how you can recognize them is they have these slide lock style uh, buckles here. And uh, these are actually well-designed style buckles. I really like them. The problem is they're not as tough as the buckle design on the LC2 packs. I have several packs and these things have broken on me over the years. They are tough, they do last a while, but they will break eventually. LC2s, these things are, these things are tough as nails. They're not as uh, convenient as these, but they, they work, all right? They work and they, they won't fail on you, all right? So to tighten them, you just pull back on this uh, tab here, pull the, the webbing, and it tightens up to release it, pull the opposite direction, and there you go, you get their slack. The pack itself is the exact same design. The only change really is uh, with the straps. The last generation of Alice pack, at least for the mediums, was in woodland camouflage. Okay, so if you're seeing woodland camouflage, medium Alice packs, this is the last uh, variation that they designed before it was subsequently replaced by your uh, later Molly packs. Okay, so these are examples of large Alice packs. So the big difference that you can see where you can tell whether you're looking at a medium or large Alice pack right off the bat is your larger Alice packs will have these magazine pouches here on the, uh, the front. Um, obviously it's a much deeper and wider and bigger pack. Okay, the pockets are bigger as well, um, more so the center pocket as opposed to the outside. I believe that the outside pockets are the same size as on the uh, medium Alice pack, but the center one is definitely a bigger, bigger pocket. And uh, it's essentially the same exact style of pack, it's just larger. And again, it has these magazine pouches. Other than that, they're about the, about the same. Um, because Alice was such a well-designed pack, and uh, it's been around for years. It's combat proven, like I said. Um, you have aftermarket variants of the same pack. So all your USGI issued large Alice packs are gonna be the standard OD green. An example of an aftermarket pack would be this one right here. This is a Woodland Camouflage large Alice pack. You can tell that because look, it's got the uh, magazine pouches here. It's got the wide pocket on the outside in the center. Um, it's just a civilian copy of the large Alice pack in a woodland camouflage pattern. But if you're talking USGI issue, all the large Ruck um, Alice packs were OD only. So I wanna talk about the shoulder straps on the Alice packs. So one of the things that makes the Alice pack so versatile is that there's plenty of replacement parts out there, guys. So if something breaks, if a buckle breaks, or something snaps or rips off, you just buy a new component and replace it. And then so much of this stuff was produced, guys, that it's still very readily available and you can get it very cheap. Um, so I want to just talk about the shoulder straps real quick. So this is the LC1 shoulder straps. As you can see, it's a little bit different, okay? Your padding goes all the way down, but the padding is significantly um, thinner than on the LC2, LC2 style um, pack straps. So. Another thing I want to point out is look how it's angled. So you do have a left and a right shoulder strap, okay? So they're not universal in that regards. You can see that the, after the padding ends, the, uh, the strap itself comes at an angle. 
and that's true on both the LC1 and LC2. Uh, one thing I want to note though is just like with the aftermarket Woodland pack that I have right here, there are aftermarket shoulder straps. So this is an aftermarket shoulder strap and these from the appearance are for the most part pretty straight. So these are essentially universal. You can use these on either side. Um, again, these are aftermarket straps. Um, so, you know, even when the surplus dies out in the, in the future, you still got these aftermarket straps out there uh, and available. And these are pretty much as cheap as the surplus ones. Um, quality wise, they're probably not as good as the uh, USGI issue uh, shoulder straps, but they, they work, um, you know, from my experience anyways. The last generation of Alice, just like that Woodland Alice pack over there, they uh, they came out with some, I've seen OD ones as well, but these Woodland straps, and these are significantly more padded than even the uh, LC2 pack straps. As you can see, they kind of, it's kind of a mixture of the LC1 and LC2 pack strap where, you know, it goes down a lot further um, with the padding and whatnot. And uh, these are definitely very good quality uh, pack straps, but, you know, I would, I recommend any of the uh, LC1, LC2, and, uh, the, you know, the last generation pack straps. To me, they're, they're all just fine, and uh, I haven't had any issues with any of the pack straps. So, essentially, just get the ones you want. If you want more padding, then, yay, look for these, these style uh, on eBay or whatnot or a surplus store. The LC2 ones are probably going to be the most common pack straps out there, and they are definitely cheap, and for me, they work just fine. One thing I want to point out is on the LC1 style of straps, you only have one quick release as opposed to both of them on the uh, LC2. Here's an up close look at the medium Alice pack. I got two different variations here. I got the LC1 with this style buckle and I got the LC2. Regardless whether it's LC1 or LC2, the design is for the most part the same. Um, you got three exterior pockets on the outside and these pockets are actually pretty roomy. To get inside these pockets, you can either use the slide buckle or you can just pull on this tab here to open up the button. To show you guys how much room's in there, here's a full MRE. I'm gonna go ahead and stuff that sucker in there. As you can see, I've got a little bit of extra space in there. As well, if I were to field strip this MRE, I could get quite a bit of them in there. All right, we got two straps that go over the uh, top of the pack and into the front, and that's how you, to gain access into it, you would loosen those up so that you can lift the lid. Towards the top of the pack, you have a piece of webbing that runs all the way across, and that's to accommodate additional Alice pouches. You also have these older style um, holes here to accommodate your hook and loop style hangers. To accommodate those, all three of these pouches on the front have an access behind them, okay? So, uh, for instance, your machete here, you can stick it right through, and then you would put the hook and loop through, and that's how you can carry your machete. Quite cool little feature there. You also have this same webbing on the sides, so I can put, you know, a two-cord up top, an e-tool on the bottom, um, you know, your <laughs> possibilities are endless, really. Uh, towards the bottom, I have more webbing, and these can accommodate, you know, lashing straps. So if you want to put, you know, something like an ISO mat down here, you could uh, put this down here and put your lashing straps over. And same is true with a, let's say, a sleep system. You guys can also, I also want to point out the drain holes. So if you guys go through a, you know, a river or a crossing or whatnot, and your pack fills up with water, that water has a capability of escaping and you're not humping, a, you know, adding an additional 50 to 100 pounds of water to your, uh, to your pack. That water will drain out slowly. On the back, we'll get to uh, attaching the uh, actual pack straps here in a little bit, but you can see it's got some um, padding for your shoulders and then your capability of mounting it to either a frame or just putting the uh, straps on there by themselves. The top lid to the pack is actually supposed to be a waterproof lid. Now, these things are really old, so most of the rubber will deteriorate or has deteriorated already. 
um, depending on which pack you get. I mean, eventually it's all going to deteriorate. Uh, just, you know, depends on which pack you get, how old it is, and, you know, <laughs> what its life's been like. Um, but you can find new lids if you want to get a pack with a serviceable a waterproof lining. Um, you can get new p lids and sew it on yourself. Uh, me personally, I don't really care. You know, if it starts raining and whatnot, I'm just going to take my poncho, wrap it around my pack, and secure it with some bungee cords. Or you can get a, uh, like a poncho pack cover to, um, you know, put over your pack and that'll help waterproof it. But anyways, back on uh, point here, the lid has a opening here where you can store, you know, like a waterproofed map. Um, another thing I like to do is take a VS-17 air panel and you can stick that air panel in there. Once you get it all situated, obviously. All right, I just kind of stuffed it in there so it's all bumpy, but you know, flatten it out. But anyways, long story short, VS-17 air panel in the lid. That way it's easy access. So if you need to signal a bird for Kazavac or whatnot, it's there. Um, opening it up towards the top of the pack, you have this uh, 550 cord that secures it. To tighten it, you just pull the string and then slide the lock down and that locks in place. All right, to open it, just pull that lock down and out and there you go, drawstring inside the pack. This pouch right here was originally designed for a PR7, PRC-77 radio. You know, so it's a radio pouch, but you can use it modern day for just about anything, um, particularly like a hydration carrier. You stick your, you know, your water bladder in there, run your cord out, and then to, you know, to you. So a lot of uses for that old uh, piece of, you know, what was designed for a radio can be used for, you know, water bladders and a lot of modern day purposes. So, if you can see down there, that pack is pretty roomy, even though this is just the medium pack. Um, one last thing I want to point out here before we go down to installing the uh, straps is at the bottom of the LC1 pack, you actually have these ties. Now these ties are designed inside here there's some d-rings you can actually tie this pack up with these d-rings and it will make it make the pack smaller so if you want to turn this into more of like a you know smaller haversack style of pack you can do that um, the later packs like this one this lc2 later variant does not have that okay they, they removed that option so so those are definitely not in there. So you don't have that capability with the older packs. However, you know, this thing, you can actually, if you tighten it up, you can get it pretty small. So um, it's kind of a, I don't want to say pointless because somebody probably uses it, but um, it wasn't entirely needed. So just a little extra thing that you, know, you probably didn't know about. So in any event, let's move on to uh, shoulder strap insulation. All right, shoulder strap insulation. So you can either run this pack with a frame or without a frame. I highly recommend with a frame, but you know, to each his own. So to install these shoulder straps, if you look at these, obviously you can see at the bottom, there's an angle there, okay? Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the top and it's got these, uh, these D-rings towards the top here. And this is installing this without the frame. So I'm gonna run this uh, webbing through the D-ring and then back. So back, all right, so there's the top. Now for the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the quick release and put that off to the side for now. So at the bottom you can see it's got this loop. You're going to find the uh, D-ring at the bottom, run this loop side through, all right. And then I'm simply going to take this buckle end through the loop and then pull, pull tight through. Once I got that, I'm going to reconnect the quick release. So D-ring through D-ring, buckle through, and then snap in place. And there we go. We have a strap attached. 
any straps to adjust, pull tight to release, or excuse me, loosen. You can lift up on this. And that's what also this is here for to help facilitate that. Lift up, and there you go. All right, guys, so this is the large Alice pack. Now, visually, this thing looks exactly like the medium Alice pack, but there are some differences. The key one is that you'll see right off the bat, it's got pouches here for magazines. So your standard USGI magazines. And I'm gonna put some other magazines in there just to show you guys what will fit. Um, in the front here though, the middle pouch is significantly bigger than the pouches that are on the medium malice pack. The two flanking pouches are the same size as the one on the medium malice pack. However, this middle one is where it definitely has a lot of extra space. So to illustrate that, I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna take that same unfilled stripped MRE that I had earlier, I'm gonna stick that in there. And now look at all that room, guys. A lot of room left, okay? So a lot more room in that center pocket on the large Alice Ruck. So again, you have the uh, magazine pouches. On the sides, you have additional webbing for, you know, additional Alice style um, pieces of gear. You know, magazine pouches, two core canteens, e-tools, and whatnot. You also have the uh, the hook fastener style, and again, you you see that you have the pass through, so you can put your machetes through there. You do not have the pass through on the center one for obvious reasons. You got the magazines above, but you do have the pass through on the uh, the side flanking pouches. So, on the back here, guys, you can see it's got the uh, the shoulder pad. This pouch excuse me, this pack is not designed to be worn by itself. You can rig it up, but you're supposed to have the Alice frame with it, okay? You're supposed to wear an Alice frame, and I don't recommend humping this pack without an Alice frame. I, th I think the Alice frame is a great piece of gear, and, and you should use it. So, particularly with this larger ruck, okay? Because if you're using this ru larger ruck, that means you're probably taking a larger load, um, so you probably want, you're definitely going to want an Alice frame to go with it. So let's, uh, let's take a look at these magazine pouches to see what we can fit in there. All right guys, to give you an idea of what kind of magazines will fit in here. So I've got two USGI magazines and throw them in there. And although it's pretty tight, you definitely can get two in there. All right. Um, you can get one magazine, Magpul magazine in there, just fine, but two is a no-go. All right, see that? Not enough. So two mag pulls, a no-go, only one. Uh, you can do two G3 magazines. So if you run a G3, PTR, 91 or something, two G3, just fine. If you're an M1A or M14 kind of guy, you can do two M14 magazines. There you go. So that should give you an idea of what kind of magazines. AK magazines will not work. They're uh, they're too long, and uh, I tried them, so those are a no go. So all your uh, you know your Western related calibers or magazines seem to be uh, just fine. All right, so this is your Alice frame. It is an aluminum frame. It is non-adjustable, so that is a negative. However, it is built for the average adult male's height, so it's pretty accommodating to most men. Uh, it's a pretty basic design. We'll get into some of the benefits of having this, uh, this frame later as far as what you can do and your capabilities with it. On the back side is going to be your kidney pad along with your waist belt. There are different variations of this uh, waist belt. This is the last variation that they made of it. So just find the one you want. And uh, these are incredibly plentiful. So if these ever break or uh, deteriorate on you, you can just buy a new one. So now we're gonna transition into me showing you how to insert this into your pack. So installation of the Alice frame. First thing I wanna mention is that all the uh, shoulder straps and everything are gonna be stripped. You're just gonna have the Alice pack by itself bare. Um, on the frame as well, it's bare. There's no shoulder straps attached yet. Okay, um, another thing I just want to point out guys, I have this buckled around the back and the reason I do that is because and this is person, personal preference, I don't really use this very often. Um, the reason for that is because 
you know, if you get contact or whatnot and you gotta strip this pack, you're gonna hit those quick releases. And I want this pack to just fall off me into the ground, okay? Um, if I have this around my waist, it's one more thing I gotta unbuckle. Um, plus, you know, in the intensity of combat, you know, I don't have, you know, I might, might not be thinking about this waist buckle. I don't wanna hit those quick releases. And then this thing falls back all that way to that pack. And then here we go, I still got a waistband on, right? So I typically just um, tighten this around to the backside of my uh, frame here and then leave it like that. I hardly ever use the waist buckle. All right, to attach this, I'm simply gonna slide this in, right? Until it goes all the way in and hits the uh, top here. At the top of this pack, you'll see that there's two D-rings. Okay, now the large Alice Ruck does not have these D-rings, so you don't have to worry about them on that. But just be mindful of the medium Alice pack, you got these D-rings right here, we're gonna utilize those. All right, so next guys, as you can see on the side of this pack, I have these uh, fasteners here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this material, I'm gonna run it through the side. Okay, now I can either do it once or I can do it twice. If you only do it once, you're gonna have a little bit extra um, webbing there. All right, so I wrapped it around. Now I'm gonna come by and I'm gonna secure this by taking it through this metal clip here. And there we go, we've attached it. All right, and I'm gonna do the same for the other side. Come through once. twice tighten it down and there we go it's secure all right now moving on I'm gonna take the bottom of my Alice strap for my shoulder straps okay notice I've taken the top part off I'm gonna use the loop side And I'm going to come in through the hole in the frame. Then I'm simply just going to put this through, pull tight, and there we go. I'm going to do this on the opposite side as well. All right, guys, so I've got both straps attached to the uh, side of the pack here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to the shoulder straps. Remember, there's an angle here, so make sure you get the right shoulder strap for the right one. So that one goes on my uh, right shoulder. All right, so underneath this frame, you have an indention there, a little uh, bracket. We're gonna slip this webbing through that bracket. We're gonna find that D-ring. And then we're gonna take that webbing and go through the D-ring. So it should go underneath the bracket of the Alice uh, frame and then through the D-ring of the Alice pack. That's gonna come over the top. And we're gonna go through the buckle here to the desired length. All right, once I got that attached, I can take the bottom portion now and reattach those uh, quick releases. And there we go. I'm gonna do that to the other side now. Well, that's it guys. That's how you attach the uh, pack straps to the pack frame. So now we got the uh, pack firmly secured to the frame. That sucker ain't going nowhere. One of the best features of this pack is the fact that you can add a shelf to it and hump extra ammo. And you can disconnect this pack very quickly to transform this thing from an individual rifleman's load carrying pack to humping additional gear such as ammo, water, gasoline, whatever you can strap to your back. Cargo, cargo uh, shells, cargo straps, all that stuff is readily available and it's cheap, guys. So this is one of the key things about this pack system that just makes it so fantastic. And in my opinion, just puts it leaps into bounds above what we are currently issuing in the U.S. military because you just can't do this with that uh, current Marine Corps issue pack system or the pack system they have in the Army. All right, guys, so here's an up-close look at the, uh, the frame with the shelf. So the shelf's on there. 
The ammo cans are on there. As you can see, I got two lashing straps going across each can, and then I've got the uh, lashing strap going over the top. Like this sucker's not going anywhere. It's in there secure, easy to, uh, to hump with. And you know, if you gotta hump ammo <laughs> or water or gasoline, what, whatever the case may be, this is the way to do it, all right? Um, that's the best possible way. And lashing straps, USGI issue lashing straps, whether they be from the Vietnam era or the, uh, you know, if they're actual lashing straps made for the Alice system, they all work just fine. Here's the uh, shelves. So this is the actual Alice shelf. This one is for a lightweight uh, rucksack frame and these Vietnam era rucksack or lightweight rucksack frame shelves work in the Alice, um, the Alice frame as well. So uh, if you can see these, these are, these are pretty relatively readily available and they're sometimes cheaper than the uh, regular Alice shelves and they work, like I said. So whichever ones guys. Installation of the shelf. So you have this gap right here. You're gonna line that up with the uh, centerpiece and then just slide it on. There you go. Whatever you're putting on there, just sit right over the top of it. And then you take your st lashing straps and strap it down. Lightweight frame, Vietnam era. There you go, fits right in there. Same concept. Strap it down. So why is the Alice Pack modular? Well, because guys, as I already talked about with the shelf and carrying extra loads, you also can add any Alice compatible gear as well as Molly gear can sometimes fit on the Alice Pack itself. Um, I've got a few things laid out here. So on your Alice Pack, around the top you have the Alice webbing. Also intermingled with the Alice webbing, are these little holes for the original hanger style equipment such as used in uh, World War II. Um, so things like bayonets, uh, maddoxes, machetes, these all are compatible. Any Alice equipment that you have, such as e if you're carrying extra ammunition, here's a three magazine Alice pouch. These things are really cheap. They're all over the place. You take your Alice clips, and then you just hook them in there. And then you buckle them down, and there you go. You got extra ammo. You know, if you wanted to add a two quart canteen, you've got these same webbings on the side, one on the top and one on the bottom. I've actually added some 100 round, or excuse me, 200 round saw drum pouches to the sides for extra space on mine here. As you can see, I've got an e-tool cover on the bottom here, and then above it, I have a uh, 100 round or 200 round saw drum pouch. Um, if you want it, you can, you know, outfit it more desert oriented. You know, they make Alice equipment in desert tan. So, I mean, the possibilities are just endless, guys. Plus these Alice webbing facilitate putting D-rings on really easy. So if you want to put a D-ring on there, you can hang things off it. Um, you know, whatever has a hole to hang with. On the bottom, you have two, two Alice, um, you know, pieces of webbing here. And then I usually put a lashing strap through here and I'll run my isomat through here. And that's what will hold my isomat. So the isomat will be on the bottom. And then uh, I might put my sleeping system either inside the pack or on top of it, depending on how long I'm going to be in the field. You need extra water you know you got two quart canteen options you got one quart canteen options all this stuff will fit conveniently on the uh, pack itself so some molly options so there's a flood of molly 2 uh, pack 
additional pouches and uh, I found that these Molly 2 pouches, sustainment pouches, actually work pretty well if you add them to the side of an Alice pack. So on the side of an Alice pack, like I said, you have the uh, top and bottom webbing. So you can actually rig these through there. It kind of scrunches up a little bit, but you rig them through there and then you secure them additionally with uh, zip ties and whatnot. And then there you go, you, you'll have a sustainment pouch on the right and a sustainment pouch on the, uh, the left hand side if you want to do that. You can also do the uh, old Molly 2 bud pack. You can put that on the bottom so then you have an additional uh, space on the bottom. You can also get the uh, sleeping carrier that they had for the Molly 2 pack that will also tie into this as well. And uh, man, I'm telling you guys the custom, you know, you can customize the crap out of these things. <laughs> you know, for a pack that's been around since the you know, late 70s, it's just unbelievably modular. One of the best pieces of additional gear that you can get for an Alice pack is a two quart canteen. They just clip on with the Alice keepers onto the side webbing. Always when you're dealing with Alice keepers, make sure you reinforce these with either zip tie or 550 cord. In addition to your two quart canteen, it should have came with a uh, two buckle utility general purpose strap here. And uh, one thing we can do is we can run that general purpose utility strap around the pack to keep it tight. So if you notice on both sides of your two quart canteen, you have these little D-rings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my general purpose strap, I'm gonna hook it onto one of the D-rings. And then I'm gonna start running general purpose strap through. Underneath these buckles, you can see there's a gap there where you can fit a whole finger. So run that through. Come under my pack straps. And I'm just going to weave this all the way through. When I get to the side here, if you got an e-tool, I'm gonna go underneath the e-tool and then I'm just gonna button the lid on it. When you get to your pack frame, you're gonna go underneath the bar, over the top of the center bar, and then underneath again. And then once I'm on the other side, I'm simply just gonna clip on. There we go. Got a utility strap that goes all the way around my pack to help keep it, keep it tight. And obviously I can tighten this up as needed. All right, so this is your waterproofing bag, AKA Willie Peter bag. And you simply just take this, stick it inside your Alice pack, fold this over, and then you just start stuffing your stuff inside. Your extra camis, your sleeping gear, your snivel gear, whatever you're sticking inside your uh, Alice pack. Once it's all in there, you just fold it over, tie it off, and then there you go. You have a waterproofed pack, plus this will double as a uh, flotation device. If you have a forge or a river or some sort of body of water, this will support your body as you attempt to cross. Camouflaging your pack. So numerous pack covers were made for the Alice pack. You got a woodland, snow, you got the uh, original Desert Storm era, six color desert pattern. You got a three color desert pattern. And then you can also buy modern day stuff such as this uh, uh, water resistant pack poncho and multicam. And you simply, all you do guys, is once your pack is all packed up, you just put these on the outside. And whatever you know terrain you're operating in, if you're in a desert environment, use your desert covers. If you're in a jungle environment or some sort of woodland environment, you know, you can use a woodland cover. And uh, these things do two things. They break up the silhouette of your, of your pack and it contains everything all nicely compact. So, you know, the common saying is a tight pack is a light pack. So a camouflage cover is a good addition to any Alice pack. And they're readily available. These things are really cheap, guys. As you can see, I've got one in damn near any environment that I need to operate. 
and on the back, once you set them up, it should look something like this. You know, you have your kidney pad and then you got your straps. And then the rest of your pack is covered by a camouflage covering. Guys, I want to talk about some of the modifications that guys have made to these packs. So because these packs have been around for so long, there's been products made for them, aftermarket products, plus guys have came up with some pretty ingenious stuff to enhance their pack more to their liking. But here's an example of something uh, that was produced by a company. So this is a sustainment pouch specifically built for the Alice pack. As you can see, it utilizes Alice keepers on the sides, so on the top and on the bottom. And again, it just gives you extra space for your uh, your Alice pack. So th these type of things are out there. Uh, at the top here, they got a uh, another pouch that goes on the top. So just enhancing it, giving it more um, more space to carry more stuff. So there's no shortage of videos out there on YouTube about guys doing modifications to their Alice packs to you know bring them up to modern day. Uh, if that's what you want to do, by all means, go ahead and do it. Some of the most common modifications I see are guys taking, you know, surplus Molly 2 um, shoulder straps and kidney belts and replacing their Alice stuff with that uh, because it has, you know, more padding and, and everything else. You know, if that's what you want to do, by all means. Uh, me personally, I like the way the uh, Alice pack was originally designed. I think it works the best with body armor and, and getting in there with your regular combat load on. Uh, definitely, if you're slick, and you're looking at this for as more as like a hiking pack or whatnot, yeah, you know, those modifications that you use with the Molly 2 um, straps and waist belt and everything else are definitely some upgrades. Um, some other things I wanna talk about is, you know, I've already talked about with the LC1, like these clips right here will eventually break and, and have broken on me. As an example here, this pack, I've had two of these LC1 clips break on me and uh, I replaced them with, you know, more modern, um, you know, fast text type uh, buckles here. Um, but you know, if you if this is something you want to do and you want to replace all this older hardware with something like this, like this is so easy, guys. You just simply cut off the old metal components with you know either a Dremel tool or some pliers or whatnot, and then you can just get some uh, some buckles like this. This one, you know, these clip in, so it just goes in, and then you clip it, and then there you go. It's uh, it's just it's really just a cakewalk, and uh, there's no shortage of ideas from the Good Idea Fairy as if when it comes to you know modifying your Alice pack. Well that's it guys, that concludes this video over the medium and large Alice pack. If you didn't already have an appreciation for the Alice pack system, I hope you do now. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to leave a comment.